So, uh, you gonna show us what you do in there? Well, welcome to my playground. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Is your shop like over here? Yeah, how would you like this door? Nice. My daughter painted that. That's you know? beautiful, yeah, I it's... get the flowers. Well, you know, this also is what I'm doing. I make cars more environmentally friendly. Yeah, it looks like it. Can you show us what you do in this shop? Oh, sure. Come in. Thanks. So, as I said, this is my playground. Where it looks like maybe an ordinary car shop, but it really isn't. You know, I have to confess something. I always had a dark side, liking cars, you know? And in the meantime, I have learned, like most of us have learned, that cars are not necessarily environmentally friendly. So I decided, well, I do my bit and do a little bit to make them more environmentally friendly so I don't have to have such a bad conscience after all. And so I developed this playground to do that. You're a lucky guy. My wife had never let me get away with this. Oh well, we all need the environment, so that's one contribution. And so it works. Nice. Well, why don't you show us uh, what you wanted to show us when we first uh, were talking about this uh, diesel uh, conversion business. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, it all starts with the oil. And the oil I'm using doesn't take millions of years to you know, come about. It just takes one growing season because it's plant fuel, plant oil. And the oil is also oil that's been used for, you know, food supply, for making fries or something like that. Now, there are a couple of problems with the oil. The one thing is that today's engines, diesel engines, are optimized towards diesel. And the oil is a bit thicker. So we have to thin the oil and we do that with heat. I'll show you that to you later. But first we have to get the dirt out of the oil and make it clean because <laughs> the engine doesn't have any teeth. So, you know, the chewy parts have to come out. Let me show you how that works. Okay, well, just follow along and watch what you're doing. All right. Um, everything here. So this is my oil refinery. Come in. So here's where I prepared the oil. And that's a big thing, you know? I use the energy that's already there because gravity is my friend. You know, when the oil comes in those containers, I'll take one out here. So this is just an oil container where I collect the oil from the restaurant. And then I let it sit for a bit. And what gravity does for me is it settles down some of the oil, like the, the solids at the bottom of the oil. And so then when I start pouring, you can see the first part of the oil is already quite clear. But there might still be some floaters and some french fries and stuff in there. And of course, cars don't have any teeth. So I need to make sure that I have pure liquid diet for the car. So I pour the oil in through another screen. You can see, oops, there we go. That's where it goes. Now it's screened and filtered through the barrel, into the barrel, and then it sits there for another bit. It's down. So now it goes in here and settles. And then I pump it over to the next one and to the next one. And in the end, this is my fuel station. So what I do here is, you can see this thing that's a little centrifuge. And before the oil gets into this one, it runs through that centrifuge. That centrifuge takes out the very fine particles that it may still be in the oil. And then I have a pump here, and then I just have my nozzle, park the car outside, fill it in the tank, and off we go. So this is my refinery. You see there are no smokestacks, no, no burning flames, no nothing, just gravity. And a little bit of electricity to pump it out. I could also give it by hand, but I'm lazy sometimes, so I use a bit of electricity. Well, it looks like a kitchen, you know, uh, you're picking up the oil here and uh, 
you get this from uh, as a byproduct of uh, restaurant cooking oil yeah that's right um, these barrels actually are used barrels they come they actually from a, from a bakery that had some some oil in them you know for baking so I'm getting the old recycled barrels and use them for my fuel station so everything that you see here basically is pure recycling so now I can pump it over to the next one with my own hand power. You can see the oil comes through and simply goes into the next one. All right. So once I pumped it over from the primary barrel, I can use the pump that sucks it either from this one or this one and goes through the centrifuge and through the centrifuge there's some extra cleaning available so the oil is cleaned to the appropriate micron level and then once I got the pump running it's very easy I just simply can take this nozzle go outside and when I'm at the car press the lever and the fresh oil will come out that I can use as fuel that's it all right, so now this is the whole fuel system and the last part is of course to fill the car. So I take my hose and my nozzle, open the door and wonder I said, follow me. Oh, so here we go. Are you gonna put it in there? <laughs> no, look, uh, this is the original diesel fuel tank. And this is what I call a two-tank system. It has one tank for diesel and one tank for that. Huh. You still can't see the tank yet, huh? Because, see, all the original space is left intact. But this car has a secret. Secret compartment? Yeah, and there's the tank. It's right underneath, and it's underneath the spare tire. And there we go. Put the oh, nozzle right in, in there. and that's it. That's sneaky. Yeah. You know, and, and the, what I like about it is, if you want, not that I recommend it, you can actually dip your finger into the fuel and lick it. Oh. Won't harm you. Oh. It's oil. It's mm. environmentally okay. If you spill it, big deal. So it's, it's really just plant oil. That's what it is. Cooking oil. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the french fries that you had for lunch were done in it. Who knows? Well, I did have uh, I did have my eggs this morning. Uh, fried them. Yeah. So uh, okay. So then after it's, uh, tell us how you put the fuel tank in there. Yeah. You can see it's right underneath. It goes underneath the spare tire too. It's made specially for this car. And that's what I do. I adapt the systems to whatever car so they don't interfere with the normal operations. So they're easy to use, and you still have the space. Let me show you. You go to the front of the car and what we'll look for is something like this. This is a heated filter unit. If you use the fuel and we want to make sure that it's filtered right and this is what this filter does. But there's more to it. There are different ports here and again this is heated with coolant so basically the oil has to flow through coolant, of course, in separate chambers, and is heated to a good temperature. Now, if you ever had something that needed oil in the frying pan, you will have noticed that when you heat up the pan, the oil thins down. Yeah, I mean, it'll even smoke at a certain point. That's when, uh, you know, the alarm yeah. goes off inside the house. It's like, yeah, you know, lunch is ready when the smoke alarm goes, you know. But <laughs> that's not how far we go in here. Um, we just heat it up to, in the end, to about 100 degrees or so, because then it has the same viscosity as the oil, uh, as the diesel. The oil has the same viscosity oh, as the diesel. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we want to do, because the engines are now optimized towards diesel, and so we want to make sure that the combustion process works all right. So, so it'll so, have the same viscosity as the diesel oil yeah. once it's heated through that uh, particular unit there. Exactly. And what's important is that you have a good exchange 
and the heat between the coolant and the oil. And that's what this unit does very well. That's quite compact too. Okay. And then you just give it another bit of heat as needed. I use a little bit of uh, electric heat. This is an inline heater that kicks in when necessary. It's controlled uh, by a thermostat and that heats the oil to make sure that it um, is at a good operating temperature. So let's go to the engine. All right. So at first glance, that looks pretty much like a modern diesel engine. Nothing really stands out. But when you look closer, you know, and I take this little cap off, which I call the veg took. The veg took. Yeah, it's a Canadian invention, you know, it's the veg took. It keeps everything warm, it keeps the head of the filter warm. This is the filter that I showed you before. It's heated to coolant, and the oil as it comes out of the tank goes through there. Now, the original fuel filter is still here. So you can use two different fuels. You can use diesel or biodiesel here, and you can use straight vegetable oil here. So you have two tanks and two separate fuel systems that give you an enormous range with that car too. Right. Now, if I take this off here, then you can see these lines, they go through here, and there is the heater, the electric heater that I showed you before. Oh, right, right, I see it. And it's only on when it's on the oil. It doesn't need to be on when it's on the thinner fuels. But as you know from cooking, when you heat up something like fat in the frying pan, it thins down, it melts. And that's the same idea we use here. We thin the oil so it has the right viscosity, like the diesel. Because the modern engines are all optimized to the diesel fuel. So you want to make sure that the combustion process works right. And to engage that, we have simply two electric valves here that do the operation, so you can switch between one and the other. And they sit right here. You can see them underneath next to the battery. So it's all quite compact and all organized so that it fits into the car. So are you gonna show us uh, how this thing yeah, goes? Yeah, let me close this up here. Let's put this back on again. And we can close this. And now I can show you, if you follow me, I can show you the operation of the system. Right. It's really very simple. This car has a special system in, in the sense that there's a little computer unit. So in most cars, you'll just have a switch like any of those switches that operates the system. In this car, there's a special unit. It's a computer that does it all, that does the thinking for me. I start the car. And what you can see here is a display that shows that it's right now on diesel. It shows me also the operating temperature of the engine and of the oil or the fuel. And then it can switch automatically when it's warm enough it can switch automatically over to the plant oil and also switch back when the car is stopped. This computer does it automatically. Otherwise, you can also have just a manual switch and a buzzer that reminds you to do that. So that's it. It's very convenient. And now you have the option to drive on two different, at least two different, if not more different fuels with this car. Yeah, so you, what kind of range would you get with this type of a fuel system? Well, that's a neat thing. I mean, the modern diesel engines are quite efficient already. With the two tanks now, I can drive without stopping for about 2,000 kilometers. Not that I necessarily want to do that, you know, because I'm still a human. <laughs> but that's about the range. I just extended the range quite a bit with this uh, other tank. Yeah, so and then if you, for example, wanted to uh, um, stop and, and refuel with plant fuel because yeah. you had run out, you could switch over to the standard diesel fuel until you yeah. procured more of it or introduced more into the tank. That's right. I mean, the, the disadvantage, so to speak, to alternate fuel is that there is no ready distribution system. There are people that do that. so. 
uh, there are addresses that I can I can use where I can get purchase or borrow or get some plant fuel. Um, and locally, I get my plant fuel from a local restaurant, so that that's easy to do. And I can always take some along. I know a guy; he took a little um, tent trailer and traveled about 10,000 kilometers all over North America in a Mercedes that I had converted. And in the tent trailer, he had all these little cubes of oil. So he took his all oil with him and didn't have to fuel up at all during the whole trip. <laughs> that's kind of neat. You must have had some fun going through the border with that. Yeah, I don't think there was any any big uh, big issue with that. And hey, you know, I want to travel too. And uh, one car that I have converted, one bus went all across Canada. Another one is actually now in Argentina or Brazil right now. You know, a car that I converted. It's kind of cool to think that it goes it kind of travels through different continents. And I can show you something else about that because my plan is to make a big trip too. So this is my Syncro van um, and that's my travel vehicle and for Syncro means four-wheel drive so this one has a four-wheel drive uh, system and it also has two fuel systems. If you look at the back this is the original tank. This is for the diesel or biodiesel and then at the front of the vehicle there's another tank which is for the biofuel where I put the oil into it. This vehicle before used to be a gasoline powered vehicle with a gasoline engine and I had to convert that, put a diesel engine into it. And so what I'm using an older vehicle and put a modern engine into it and that saves the energy from the production of a vehicle too so in that sense it makes environmental sense as well. So that's that. Would you like to come for a drive now? Yeah, that'd be great. Let's go. All right. Well, I show you how easy this all works together. So let's go for a ride. Hey, that sounds great. And you will feel no difference in the car. I mean, it has the same power. It has the same. You know, everything, you know? Video manual. That's right. That's what we're running on right Engine now. oil right now. Yeah, that's what we're running right now. Yeah, this thing really works well. I mean, it seems to run really well on this. And then we're back driveway, we're back home and shut the car down, right on, and that's it. Well, that was a great drive. I really I really enjoyed that. I mean, uh, this, this thing really performs well with that vegetable oil. Yeah. And there, it says purge completed. Okay. <laughs> So here are the sunflowers and it's fall, they're fading, it's a time for harvest. And we get seeds from sunflowers, get oil from the seeds or from canola or different plants. And then the oil and the bounty that we have from the harvest is used for our nutrition to, uh, to feed us. And once it's been through that cycle and it's not good anymore for human consumption, that's when I use it for fuel. And you've heard me say I use the straight vegetable oil or plant oil. There's also another process where people make biodiesel out of it, and that's a chemical process. We use chemicals to settle down the, the thick stuff, the glycerin, from uh, the oil, so it has the same viscosity. It's just as thin as regular diesel, because that's what the cars like to use. And I convert the car instead. I convert the car so that you can use the straight vegetable oil in a tank and use it as fuel. And of course, as you've seen, I have to preheat it in order to give it the same viscosity. 
Now, I am quite aware that this is just a contribution and cars have many other problems in terms of their environmental compatibility. And we have to rethink, depending on our lifestyle, our modes of transportation, and if we uh, go, uh, if we need a car even, you know, if you go by bus, if you go by bicycle, and so forth. However, what I'm doing is just one part of the whole puzzle. And I think that we all need to do our part. We all need to do bits and pieces and contribute creatively so that we can enjoy a little bit longer what we have. Well, that's my hope, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing.